we are at the end of our video series, as you can see. So hello everybody, hope you're doing well, the poets here. And things have been really fun with this video series of basically how to build a PC. We went over a lot of things like the new AM5 platform for AMD, getting a CPU water block that is for AM4 to actually work on AM5. Uh, we installed our GPU, installed the motherboard into this unique case. So a lot of really beginner things, and we covered a few advanced things here as well that some people may have overlooked over the years. It's been a great journey. And in this build with the Thermaltake Distro Case 350P, it's basically my test bed, you know, so a lot of people have kind of flat laying down test bed so they can put in a GPU or put in a processor. This is more my style. So I'm going to be testing things like 4090s and other GPUs, different CPUs as well. This setup with its custom water cooling will allow me to test all of that very quickly, efficiently, and keep a lot of the things the same from like one GPU to the next. So when it comes to airflow, ambient room temperature, all kinds of things, and even swapping out the CPU because this is all ZMT tubing, zero maintenance tubing by EKWB. It's the same high-end tubing that they use in their like say $18,000, $20,000 PCs at EK Fluid Works. And go ahead and check out some of my videos on reviewing those. Those have been a lot of fun. Like say seven 3090s in one PC. Yeah, you wanna make sure you have the right tubing for that. And this is that same exact tubing. So overall, it's been a fun process. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. But let's get into some of the details of this build and why I did what I did. And of course, if this is your first video in this series, and this is the last video in this series, go on back to the beginning. I'll do a playlist for this as well. So you can really just start from scratch on learning how to build a PC. Even though this looks kind of unique and funky, all the basics are still there. Putting a motherboard in a case, putting a CPU on a motherboard, choosing the right CPU for your needs, putting RAM onto that motherboard. It's all the same. So past that, you get to custom life custom water cooling, overclocking, and this 7950X processor is actually really nice. So I've been doing a lot of benchmarking on it right now. It has a lot of interesting settings on it as well. And of course, with this really thick radiator that I have right here, it's keeping the temps in check. Even though these processors are meant to run at 95 degrees Celsius, I'm throwing everything at it and I'm not hitting 95, which is pretty darn cool. So let's get into some of the details of why I did what I did in this build. Let's start with the most important thing in a PC, the power supply unit. So this is the Thermaltake Tough Power GF3 1200 watt 80 plus gold power supply unit, and it is ATX 3.0 compatible. So even though this is an RTX 3090 with our traditional PCIe you know, power cables right here, nothing out of the ordinary, this power supply unit will actually run the newest 40 series GPUs as well. And there's no splitter needed with this. This is just one direct cable. So that'll alleviate any type of issues that people have been having with uh, melting cables. Continuing along the lines of the GPU. So this is an HP Omen 3090, the same 3090 that you'll actually find inside of a, you know, a Omen 45L PC, pre-built PC. And Basically, in this build, the GPU doesn't matter all that much because it's a testbed system. So these GPUs are going to come out, be put back in, different things are going to be ran, and I'll be able to show you guys all of my results in terms of temperatures and noise levels and just all the details everybody's always asking, especially coil wine. That's become a very important one these days. When it comes to the custom water cooling, you'll notice that I basically allowed myself as much room as possible as you can tell. And that's because when it comes to the CPU, even though it's a 7950X in here right now, I do want the ability to easily just undo these four screws, remove this without draining the loop, pop out that 7950X, and maybe pop in a 7950X 3D processor or something interesting that is AM5 compatible. So with that, there's actually a lot of slack for this tube right here and I'll actually show you, it comes all the way down here, up and around, and it's actually connected right here. So this is allowing me lots of room 
to actually just take this off. It'll dangle and I can just pop on a new one as I need to, a new CPU. And of course, with this long tube here, this is nice and flexible as well. So I can move this as much as I want. And this is a rotator O-ring right here, or rotator fitting. So nothing's going to leak or anything like that. This one, obviously I don't need to move because this is just going straight to the, uh, the block right there. And then this thermal take, 360 millimeter radiator. I believe it's about 64 millimeters thick with the push pull using the Thermaltake Ring Quad 12 fans. It's entirely silent, basically. So I could have this on full load and with my settings that I actually did a custom fan curve, even on full load, you can't hear anything, which is really nice. The DDR5 RAM is by Kingston Fury, 64 gigs, and it actually is at 6,000 mega transfers. So even though it's all four DIMMs, a lot of people have been saying they've been having issues with running four DIMMs at full speed. You'll notice right here, no issues whatsoever. Part of that is because this is Kingston Fury RAM. Kingston's one of the oldest PC memory makers out there, and they have done a fantastic job of making sure the RAM is quality they don't really care about coming out first with RAM. They wanna make sure that they have some of the best, most stable RAM out there. The motherboard obviously is the MSI MEG or MEG X670E ACE motherboard. Very high-end motherboard with lots of features. I broke down all the features in a previous video, so feel free to take a look at that. But because this motherboard is so high-end, I'll be able to run any processor I want in this on the AM5 platform and not be restricted by VRMs, by PCIe lanes that I want to utilize in terms of, say, a number of Lightning, you know, Gen 5. They call it Lightning Gen 5 on this motherboard. But basically, I wanted at least one of those right here for the NVMe drive so I can test the PCIe Gen 5.0 NVMe drives. And I've said NVMe numerous times, apparently. And there's other slots right in here. So I could actually take out this GPU and add three more drives in here as well that are PCIe Gen 4.0. And then I just have the one Gen 5.0 there as well. You'll see some mixed fittings here. These fittings are actually by EKWB, soft tubing fittings, uh, 16 outer diameter is what I go for. This tubing is actually 16 outer diameter, 10 millimeters inner diameter. So it's very thick tubing. And these are bits power right here because I just like the look and I wanted to make sure I had some 90 degree angles as well. You'll notice the riser cable right here. The riser cables are interesting because you can't just go willy nilly picking a riser cable. You need to make sure it's the right one. This riser cable right here is a Thermaltake PCIe Gen 4.0 cable. It does have a compatible bracket on it already for this case right here, it would actually screw down right here. This one right here, this riser cable, it's shorter, but it actually has a 90 degree fitting on the bottom right here. So it's actually standing kind of upright so the GPU just plugs right into it. And so that's a different fitting right here that goes into the case. So anytime you're using a riser cable, always make sure you have a good way of actually, you know, putting it onto your case. It's very important. As of this video, there's two main styles of riser cables, PCIe Gen 4.0 and PCIe Gen 3.0. GPUs barely utilize everything that's going on with PCIe Gen 3.0, but when you do have a high-end GPU, you will want to make sure that you are using a 4.0 cable. Uh, there are numerous brands out there. Basically, I wanna make sure that everybody researches what GPU that they actually have or want to purchase works best with a riser cable. So some don't work with all, so just make sure you're doing your general research. You'll notice I have six fans total on this radiator, and that's because it is 64 millimeters thick. And when you have a thick radiator like that, you wanna make sure that you do utilize push-pull. Typically anything that's 38 millimeters and thicker does greatly start to benefit from push-pull. Uh, a lot of AIOs, AIOs are thinner than that, so it's more aesthetics to put push-pull rather than an actual benefit. And if the radiator is too thin, like traditional AIOs, then you will actually generate a lot more noise as well. 
but something like this, this is ideal. So you'll notice the Thermaltake pump right here. It is integrated into the Thermaltake DistroCase 350P. I did a video of um, taking this apart, cleaning this out. It'll be on like TikTok and a few other platforms. But overall, it's a very powerful pump. It goes from one to five, five being the most powerful speed. And you're gonna choose the speed based on basically the hardware that you have. The higher end hardware in general, you may wanna have this go faster because the faster the fluid is going through your CPU water block, the lower the temperatures will actually get up to a point. You could suddenly have this going as fast as Niagara Falls, but then it's not going to you know, reduce the heat any further. So that's something you want to experiment with based on your hardware, as well as your cooling capacity for your radiators. As far as some of the peripherals on the desk here that I'll be using for testing, this is the HP Omen Spacer keyboard with Cherry MX Brown switches. These are actually some of my favorite switches. And actually, this is one of my favorite keyboards as well. I do just wish it had a number pad, so I may have to get an extension or external number pad for this. This here is the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor. So this is great for editing in DaVinci Resolve. When you're actually editing, you know, this thing probably saves me 50% in terms of actual time editing. Um, it takes about two weeks to get really used to this, but once you get used to it, you, you wish you always used something like this for video editing. And then over here, I actually do have the uh, mouse pad by Lunar Artifacts. I have one of their mice as well, which is absolutely fantastic. More elegant than practical, uh, but to match up the HP Omen uh, keyboard, I'm actually using the HP Omen uh, Vector mouse. Oh, there's still a uh, plastic on here. Don't worry about that. I like it. I like it like that. So this has actually been a very comfortable mouse for my hands. And then finally, we have the HP Omen 27 C, notice how it's curved. And uh, this is a nice 1440p monitor. I'll actually show you the specs right here. Forgive the, the glare, but I really do like this monitor a lot. When you go to advanced, you'll notice that's 240 hertz, 2560 by 1440, with really nice colors as well. So this is one of my favorite monitors. And then here we have the rear of the case the Thermaltake Distro Case 350P. It's a fantastic case to build in, a lot of fun. You actually do have a good amount of space behind the motherboard tray right here. Uh, as long as you plan out everything, it gets a little cramped if you start to use a lot of extension cables to make things look kind of nice going into the motherboard, you know, for the color scheme that you may want. But it's all still very doable. I've done it numerous times in different builds with this case. So a lot of fun. Always plan your drain valve out uh, because you wanna know how you're gonna drain this whole thing when it's full. And so I always place one right here, it makes it nice and easy to just attach a tube, open this up, and the fluid just flows right out. For pressure, this actually has a nice little pressure valve that I installed right here as well. And this is where you'll fill the case too. You know, it's a little air bubble here. So air eventually kind of increases as everything settles inside the radiators but for the most part, it's gonna stay pretty much like this. As for the IO for the case, it's all right up top here, and you'll have the USB 3.2s right here, so good, decent speed. Uh, these are the old school USB 2.0 ports right here, but for the most part, I'll always be using the USB ports that are on the motherboard themselves, since those are the very fastest ones available. And so this has been a wonderful build series. Thank you very much for all the positive comments and great questions as well in all the YouTube videos and TikTok videos, and even hitting me up on Twitter as well, which I'm probably most reachable on Twitter. So yeah, if you have questions, tweet me. And overall, PC building is a fun process for me and a horrible process for others. You know, it's all about what you like to do in life. This is one of my hobbies, and this is something I've been happy and eager to share across different social media platforms, and I'm gonna to continue to do this. A build like this is just gonna make it even easier, where I can just swap out the GPU, swap out the CPU, easily reach the RAM and all that stuff. Um, and of course, with custom water cooling, uh, this fluid here, and I'll do another video on that, the actual fluid and draining and filling, but with this fluid, there's like almost no maintenance whatsoever as well. So it's just gonna make my life easier to quickly make videos and bring all that information to you as well. 
So if you do have certain questions on this build in particular or just PC building in general, hit me up in the comments below on Twitter, definitely Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff. And I have a lot more PC hardware coming in the mail soon and different arrangements I've made with different companies. Uh, therefore, I'm gonna be busy filming a lot of stuff and giving you guys a lot of cool benchmarks and information and my recommendations on what hardware I like and what hardware I don't like. And of course, why? And then some things with PC building, it's opinionated as well. Many of you may think that this is the ugliest thing in the world. Others may say that this is the most unique and awesome PC, which many of you have in different videos, which is thank you very much, cool. Um, but this is more about my own style, my own aesthetics, but also ease of use for all of these pieces of hardware that I will be testing. And that's kind of the point of custom PCs. You customize it based on your own tastes and preferences. So with that being said, um, yeah, I'm tired. Fun series, I will put a playlist here on YouTube as well as another one on TikTok. And again, if you like these style of videos, please hit the subscribe button. I think about 85% of you who are watching these videos aren't actually subscribed. So please hit the subscribe, subscribe button <laughs> and the like button because that helps the algorithm out and me. And then of course, if you have others that are interested in PC building, just go ahead and share the videos too. And with that being said, hey, I'll see you guys in the next videos. Peace.